Huh? Do we have more dinosaurs here? Oh, shoot. lost my connection. <laughs> you know, a staple gun works good for these. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get it. There you go. I'll get it. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Just a few announcements this morning as we uh, are getting ready for worship. Um, Please be uh, in prayer for the uh, candidates for elders and uh, church council are listed in your bulletin, I believe. Uh, and um, we have uh, one additional candidate for eldership uh, pending, and we'll probably be announce, announcing that next week. Um, he has to be examined. No, <laughs> no. He, the, the the candidate has some questions actually for the elders, so we want to make sure that we that we um, go through with this um, with open hearts and open minds, so that all all uh, misgivings and questions uh, would be answered. Um, there should be a prayer team available up front here. Um, at, towards the end of the service so that you can um, come up for prayer if, if you uh, feel a particular tug by the Holy Spirit. During the prayers at the altar, uh, we're going to do a litany of sorts that we've done in the past, I think, uh, and uh, I will pray a paragraph, I will read a paragraph, and at the end of the par paragraph it, it says, Lord, in your mercy, and then your response is, hear our prayer. Right, that's correct. <laughs> so, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. There's about six or eight petitions I didn't count. <clears throat> um, there is one other announcement, and that's from uh, our dear bishop, uh, Derek Lee Cakes, and it's a two-page letter. I'm going to just read the end of this letter. And uh, what he says, in, of course, in, in these uh, tr troublous times, um, he says it this way. I will be adding the prayer of St. Francis Assisi as part of my daily prayers in the day ahead. And let's join our hearts in saying this. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying to ourselves that we are born to eternal life. Amen. 
And he says, may the Lord bless and keep you in his peace. Good morning. May the Lord bless you. Father's blessings be upon you and your families. And those of you who are watching remotely, we're glad that you're connecting with us today. Let us uh, begin our time by coming before the Father to worship him and honor him as our God who cares for us, who loves us, sent his son for us. Father, we just thank you for the blessing of your son. Jesus, we thank you for being willing to come and be our savior. Be willing to die for us so that we can live again. We can live forever with you. Father, that is just awesome that you send us your son. And, but Father, we come before you this morning and ask, Holy Spirit, we ask you to shine your light upon our hearts and show us where we have sinned, where we have not done what you've told us to do, disobedience, where we've been insensitive to those around us. Lord, where we've been self-centered, where we shouldn't be. We come before you this morning, Holy Spirit, and shine your light upon our hearts and show us where we've done those things. by people who are called by my name. It does not say if the heathen. It says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray that I will heal their land. And upon your confession, upon your coming before him, I'd like to announce to you that if we say we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us, but if we will confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I announce that forgiveness to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Before we move into worship, uh, <clears throat> we are uh, we're in some trying, interesting and Rick Joyner would say, exciting times right now. And exciting times where it seems like the Father is delaying, delaying. Lord, we've been praying. We've got millions and millions of people lifting up prayers. What's happening? Why is nothing happening? And what does the Father say? The Father says, I know. I'm in control. Watch and see what I do. Look at the stories. Look at the stories of Jehoshaphat, of Esther, and others. David. Look at those stories. The father always waits till the last minute. And what is he doing now? He's revealing 
the evil that's out there. And what, are, what is our part? Our part is to be praying that that evil would be exposed so that the Father can deal with it, and he will deal with it. And we don't know how he's, he's in charge. But I encourage you, number one, do not be afraid. Number two, trust the Lord. Trust that he knows what he's doing. Trust that he hears our prayers. He says, if you pray, I will hear your prayers. We have to know that. And he knows every one of the prayers that we pray. Trust him, trust him. And he says, I will act in my time and my ways. What does it say in Isaiah 43? I am doing a new thing. Watch. And the new thing that he's doing is much greater than what we think. But I encourage you to pray. If you've watched, don't watch the news. Don't watch news. Go watch uh, men of God, spiritual men of God. There have been men who were there in Washington as he watched, as they watched the evil being done. And obviously the rep reporters aren't reporting the truth. But anyway, so as I'm preparing for this Sunday, the Lord usually gives me the songs for a Sunday three to four weeks ahead of time. So I'm looking at what he gave me. And the first song we're going to be doing this morning is called You Shine. And our theme is the God who made the heavens and the earth. Why should I be afraid? Because he cares for us. And the man who wrote that song, Brian Dirksen, has at least one or two severely disabled children. And he wrote that song from that, from that place. And uh, so anyway, I invite you to, to stand as we start and then uh, do whatever you're comfortable after that. Okay, there it is. You ready?
let your fire burn within us. Let that fire of your spirit, that fire of boldness, do not be afraid to speak out, to speak truth. The world needs to hear truth spoken. Burn off the drum. 
Before me, the throne of God, surrounded by fire, surrounded by His holiness, I could not stand. Oh, Father, Father, cover us, Father. Come, Father, do what you said you would.
Father, we're so grateful for what you've done for us, for giving us your son. Father, we lift up those in our congregation who have prayer needs, Lord, that you would touch them with your healing power. If there's needs, that you would bring provision. If there's healing, that you would bring healing. If there's restoration, that you would bring that. Lord Jesus, if there's fear, that you would bring peace and trust. If there's financial needs, Lord, that you would provide, you would guide and provide. Open doors. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we pray for our president, that you would surround him and protect him during these times. Lord Jesus, give him strength and peace and protection, Lord, and give him a wall around him that protects him from the beating down that he's getting, Lord. Give him peace. Give him strength in you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We pray for, we pray for our governmental leaders, Lord, that you would touch the hearts of those who have soft enough hearts to hear your voice, Lord, that you would change their hearts, draw them to you, bring them to you, Lord. If not, Lord, that you, you would expose them <clears throat> and bring them to justice, your justice, Lord. Pray for our, the area pastors, Lord. We pray for your calling upon this congregation, Lord, that you would burn, bring up the fire, burn within us, like we burned from days of old, Lord, that you would set us free from any fear or anything and give us boldness to speak out righteousness, truth, and your word. Draw us close to your word, Lord. Give us, give us anointing to speak your word in power, your word that can change people's lives, your words that, that can change this community, and give us boldness to share your word and your healing to those in our community that need it, Lord. There is such a need out there, and many times we run and hide. Give us boldness to not do that, to be out there and reach and touch and bless those around us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And uh, you may be seated. Uh, our prayer for a pastoral call uh, Laura is going to be doing it. It'll be up here on the video.
morning. Our Old Testament lesson is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God, God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was an evening, and there was a morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. For the psalm, which I think is going to be up on the screen, we'll um, say the psalm together in unison. And if it doesn't come up, I'll, I'll say it. <clears throat> psalm 29. And, okay. And I want to particularly just uh, bask in the awesomeness of the voice of God, which does everything. Let's rise as we speak this psalm together. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle for today is Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> what then shall we say? Shall we, are we continued to sin that sin may, grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we had been united with him in a death like his, we shall surely be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our own self will be crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For no one who has died, I'm sorry, for one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Gospel is written in the first chapter of St. Mark, beginning at the fourth verse. The first section of this Gospel lesson is going to be very familiar because we read it not too long ago. 
I believe it was in the Advent season, I didn't look it up, but um, it's about uh, John the Baptist in the wilderness, that would be Advent. And then the second part of the gospel is actually briefer, but that's the part that hits home. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized with him, by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. So far the gospel lesson. Please be seated. Pardon me? I share a short vision that the Lord's put on my heart. So I can't hear you. Ellen's, Ellen's mic. Um, for three weeks now, the Lord's been showing me this little whirlwind. It's very close to the ground, and it has just a few leaves in it. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what that is. But he, he's very persistent in just bringing it in my mind over and over. And then today, I said, Lord, it needs to, I need to know what this means. And then he showed me, like, gray over it which would be like unfilled in more, but bigger of that whirlwind, but it's not filled in yet. And then when we were worshiping and Jim started praying in the Holy Spirit, I started praying in tongues, I started as well, and then that real whirlwind started getting bigger, going towards heaven. So I believe the key is the Holy Spirit, and, and when you, re I said, Lord, show me in the word as well, someone read about the Holy Spirit which Marlo did, because that's how God works. He confirms it. So I believe that's the key. When we're, I believe that's our prayers, and we're praying. But for them to reach heaven, we, we need to include the Holy Spirit, rely on the Holy Spirit, pray in the Holy Spirit, and I believe our prayers will reach heaven. Am I on? No. I am on? Okay. So, this has been quite a week. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know where this came from? I wish I could remember the, the man's name from the Azusa, Azusa Street Revival. The black minister that I had one eye, what? Seymour. Seymour, I knew, I thought it was Bill somebody, William, William Seymour, yes. And uh, before he would bring his message, he would put the crate on his head that was in the, obviously in the warehouse in Los Angeles, and he would not give his message until he heard from the Lord. And that's kind of like the way I feel. Actually, the story goes when he stopped doing that, he's, the revival started to recede. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of how I, I feel this week, because uh, so much has happened, and. Um, well, let, let me just leave it at that and bring a couple of scriptures uh, to mind, one of them being one of my favorites. I'm, I'm going to do several scriptures where I'm going to reference the lessons, and, and, um, but uh, 
John, from John 8, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That is something that I, that's one of those verses that you just, you have to cogitate, you have to, what do what they call it, uh, munch on, <laughs> chew on, um, like um, chewing the cow, chewing the cud. It's one of those verses. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free in these times. Hallelujah. In these days, when our children are exposed to hour upon hour of violence, whether it be on their little game thing, whether it be on the phone, whether it be on the computer, the television, even the billboards. In these days, when the children can watch and at the point of a finger someone is dead or dis disintegrated or turned to dust, hour upon hour doing this kind of thing, in these days, today, I would like to go back quite a few decades to a quieter time when, especially the boys, would play cowboys and Indians, cops and robbers. They would have fun, and when they were done, they could go in and have their cookies and milk, and it was a game, and it was kind of a real game, real life game in a way, You'd grow up to be hunters, grow up to be a policeman, grow up, you know, whatever, but part of that game, and this is the part that I want to speak about that ties in directly to our epistle lesson, which I'll reread it. I'll re -read couple verses. In that game, what do they say? Playing cops and robbers, cowboys and angels, they say, bang, you're dead. And when I chose this title, I had no, I wasn't thinking about the events of, you know, of this week. But I was thinking about what baptism does to you and me, to our sin. And the beautiful thing about Paul's words in that lesson from Romans 6 is, well, what, a lot of beautiful things, but the one word that he uses that is a, an accounting term, and I've, I've spoken here before about that, that uh, we reckon our sins, we add up our, our gazillion of sins, and they add up to exactly this much, zero, in God's sight. And we are to reckon ourselves, we are to account ourselves as dead to sin. Hallelujah. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. 
What a powerful word. And you know, it's just a little aside here. What really made this real for me was hearing our dear brother Peter Whitehouse recite this whole chapter by memory. And he claims that that brought him out of the, the fog and the messed up mind that he had as part of his testimony being in the wrong culture. I also want to reference the Genesis lesson. This is before creation. This is, well, at the beginning of creation, yes, but before the first day. So the text says that the Spirit of God, that's God's Spirit, that's God, this wonderful, just we're trying to imagine this chaos. It's what it was, the tohu wabohu in Hebrew. It's, it's like the yuck. Uh, if you have the purple puzzle tree at home or if you've seen it, that's the chirp, 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 the yucky stuff. And the Spirit of God is hovering over the water. It says moving in my translation. It's hovering. It's brooding. It's a bird. It's, it's, it's like a, a, a mother bird that, that the Spirit of God is, is over this entire uh, scene at the beginning to bring it forth by the very word of God which we talked about earlier in the psalm, the voice of the Lord, what the voice of the Lord can do. Hallelujah. And then the gospel. Just, not that I'm going to read it, but just the idea in our mind that Father approves Son. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. So, your sin is dead. My sin is dead for those who are in Christ Jesus. And you know, it just rears its ugly head in so many different ways. And I'm talking about our lives, our personal lives. And it's, it seems like, oh man, I'm going to try harder, I'm going to do more, and I'm going to go to a meeting, and I'm going to have a prayer session, and um, I just, you know, now... There are times when we seriously need to seek counsel. There are times when we seriously need to seek prayer. And there are times when we have to hopefully regularly go, for, be, go before the Lord in, in our, our, even our regular prayer time. But when we in our minds understand and in our hearts believe that that column is reckoned to zero and it's dead, the sin in our lives is to be reckoned as ineffective. And then we can be raised to the new life in Jesus Christ and go forward. And that's the struggle. That is what's happening and it has been happening for months and years, I believe, to God purifying his church, because he wants a pure bride. Hallelujah. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. You know, God demands holiness, and we can't do it. We have to realize 
what kind of God we have. The psalm, going back to the psalm. But let's go back to Genesis again. What, what, did, uh, what happened in the, um, the judgments? There were judgments on Sodom and Gomorrah. There were uh, judgments in, in, in Genesis. Uh, um, he, he judged the world with a flood. I mean, there, there, there's this. Now, in, Je in Exodus, I, I, I was getting ahead of myself. In Exodus, there was the plagues, you see, and there was the, the um, he devoured, he destroyed Pharaoh's army. And in Leviticus, there, there, there's a story about two of Aaron's sons uh, being killed for unauthorized fire, it's called. In uh, the book of Numbers, the, uh, the judgment on the complaints for, for the, the children of Israel. And in uh, Deuteronomy, the chapter, I believe, was uh, 38, uh, or was it 28? I, I looked it up and I lost my notes. So I'm going to my notes that I can't read, please. <laughs> uh, but the, the blessings and the curses. And that's just the first five books of the Bible. Now we're talking about the, the jo uh, Joshua and Judges and... and, and uh, uh, Every 40 years, it seemed like something, somebody, something happened. There was this cycle. And, uh, and not to mention uh, David and Solomon. Well, th there was the time of peace, and there was a time of building the kingdom, and, and then Sol David, and then Solomon, the, the, the time of peace. But then after that, it, it was downhill, you see. And the, the whole rest of the kings and uh, prophets and all of this... Uh, 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 about a holy God, you see, that is, is uh, trying to bring his people back, trying to get his people to listen. And, and the point of what I'm saying here is this is a special, holy, righteous God that is calling us. So when we say that uh, we have, have to consider ourselves dead to sin and alive to God, that's Quite a privilege when we compare that to this holiness that God demands. And of course, we have the holiness and the righteousness in the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's basically the lesson for today. Um, what does the resurrected life look like? We read the prayer of Francis Assisi. We um, we hope and pray that that um, the events that have happened will be the, somebody said, the, 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 like the phoenix rising out of the ashes. One more thing. We listen to the prophets and um, I forget what the fellow's name is, Jeff Walden. No, Russ Walden. I'm sorry, Russ Walden. And there's many prophets out there. He's prophesying that uh, there's going to be a great awakening. We look for that. But he prefaces his remarks this way. He, he, specific to Albany, by the way. Whether that's true, whether we can believe it, uh, I, I want to tell you, I'll go back to Peter Whitehouse again, when, when uh, and Tom Arian and myself and, and Kevin Bascom and, and Fred and, and a whole bunch of us, we'd be praying for revival and praying for Albany, you see. At five, at Monday morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. It's hard to keep awake at that time of day. 
Um, and and it isn't, isn't it true that there's a delay? You see, Jim mentioned that. There's, so often there's a delay, and then, but God comes through. So this is what, um, what is his name again? Russ Walden says, change is at hand. The enemy is fading and the glory is coming in. I say to you, come out from among them. And know that from this day you are a stranger in a strange land. Go into the house of heaven I have made you to be. And put the blood on your doorposts. For I am passing through the ranks of the godless oppressors. I will work wonders and bring the small and the great to a profound recognition of my sovereignty over the earth. They will see that you are the last one standing, and they will come to you trembling, saying, Take us to your leader. We cannot live this way any longer. And then he goes into the return of the great awakening to Albany. I'm not going to read that. Uh, perhaps you can read that on your own. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord Father, <clears throat> pardon me, Lord Father, forgive our sins, forgive our, our, our coming back to, to base one so often when we could be moving on. Father, uh, forgive us uh, for, for times we have not sought help, not sought the brother to pray for us, not sought the sister to, to intercede and to cry for us so that we can put to death those grubby uh, sins that are showing on their heads, just like this chaos that your spirit hovered over and quieted. Lord, Father, that we could be dead to sin by your word and by just quoting your word against the situation just by saying no more. Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you that, that we can be alive to God in Christ. And as St. Paul continues, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. <clears throat> Do not yield your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but yield yourselves to God as people who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments of righteousness, for sin will have no dominion over you. Since you are not under law, but under grace. Can anybody say hallelujah and amen? Thank you, Jesus. What's next? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I have no trouble with the liturgy in the first service, but I forget in the second service. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to do this responsive prayer, as I mentioned, and I'm going to um, ask you to rise, and hopefully I can read this from my pad. This is new to me, uh, new to reading this in, in, uh, in, the con in front of the congregation. And uh, remember that the, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer is your response. Hear our prayer. We bless you, Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. You have revealed your son to us in the wonderful epiphany in the Jordan. So also you have revealed your name and blessing to us in holy baptism, declaring us your beloved heirs. 
Grant that we may daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, living with joy as your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, preserve the family, especially all Christian homes. Turn husband and wife toward one another in love. Equip fathers and mothers for their holy duty as teachers of the faith. Preserve all children in the saving faith and certain promises of their baptism unto life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation, its leaders, and those who serve for the good of our people and for their protection. Save us from violence, discord, and uncertainty. Grant peace in our time, O Lord, for you alone fight for us. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, give comfort and relief to those who are sick, depressed, tired, confused, in any need, lonely, unable to go out. We pray for those that we name now in our hearts, and if you want to name someone aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Be with those who are near death, that they may hear your son's words of grace in their last hour and be confident in their baptism and the forgiveness of sins where you named them your child. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At your invitation, O Father, we come to your supper for rest and refreshment. Preserve us from impenitence and unbelief. Cleanse us from our unrighteousness and clothe us with the righteousness purchased with the blood of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we remember the words that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Lead us not evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please wait. After the same manner also, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples saying, drink ye all from this. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the Lord's peace be with you always. Amen. Please, let's together receive the body of Jesus broken for you. And please receive the blood of Jesus, God's Son, who cleanses us from all sin. This is the, the blood of Jesus shed for the forgiveness of all of your sins.
Now the body and blood of Jesus strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. And receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.